Video number three. We are going to talk about the best way to introduce Young Living essential oils into a pet household. So you can have cats or dogs or birds. That's what we're going to talk about. And if you're lucky, we may even jump into the barn. Okay. So the first thing I want to remind you guys about is we do not diagnose, cure, or treat anything with essential oils. We are talking about a healthy home. We are talking about you being the um, gatekeeper, my gates, um, to the wellness factor that you have in your house. Being the gatekeeper means, you know, keeping the toxins outside the door, keeping the good stuff on the inside. So um, we're going to talk about introducing essential oils, safe essential oils into pet homes and we're going to show you the most effective ways to do that. So I have some props here. Dr. Susan's going to talk about some stuff, and I'm going to be Vanna, and we're going to see kind of how this goes. So take it away. Okay. Well, the first and the easiest way is to start with water-based diffusion. So there's a lot of different uh, essential oil diffusers out there, but I never recommend the ones that actually heat the oils or use a candle or anything like that. There are diffusers that will actually, you just hook up the essential oil bottle to it and then it puts the essential oil right out into the air. But when you're first starting, use a water-based diffuser, okay? And then you're gonna fill it with the appropriate amount of water and then just maybe two or three drops of the oil of your choice. In the starter kit, you've got a lot of animal safe, well, they're all animal safe when used appropriately, but things like lavender, your frankincense, copaiba, um, the RC. Stress away, exactly. Those are all great oils to start with. There you go. Oh, you are so good, Vanna. Uh, those are all great oils to start with in the diffuser. And so start low and slow, two or three drops, watch your pets, see how they, how they respond. And using an intermittent timing or an intermittent timer is a great way, again, uh, making sure that they have a way out. Most of the animals that I work with gravitate towards them. And when they've had enough, they're cool. They know they, they leave and they can go somewhere else. Again, if you're only using two or three drops, you're not going to overpower anything. The animal's sense of smell is so much better than ours, as we know that, um, again, we don't want to overwhelm them with that. Another mm -hmm. real easy way, is one of the things we talk about when we're sent introducing essential oils into a pet household is getting rid of the toxins and the thieves cleaner is amazing for everything it's what we use everywhere in in my clinic I don't and, oh you don't that one you don't have okay <laughs> I, thought I went to bring it in here and i don't see it. oh that's okay there, there's there's different dilution uh rates for whether you're cleaning floors tabletops glass sinks toilet bowls that type of thing and this is something that I don't worry about when it's on the floor and the cats go running across and um, it might still be wet because again, your pet is going to absorb what's on their paws, what's on their fur. So again, remember when you're diffusing, I'm gonna jump back to diffusing, that essential oil is gonna go out into the air and it's gonna land on your pet and the pet is going to absorb it that way. And if, um, if you're a cat, you're probably going to ingest it as well. So again, very, small amounts and observe your pet. So water-based diffusion, switching out your um, chemical cleaners for the plant-based thieves line is, is probably the two best things that I recommend. Oh, 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 and with the thieves too, is using the, the hand soap and the dish soap, okay? Because there's always gonna be some kind of a residue on your pet's bowls. Uh, their water bowls, that type of thing. And again, I don't worry about it with, with that. Um, whatever you have on your hands and you're petting, touching your pets, they can absorb things that way too. So the, the Thieves hand soap is in all my exam rooms. The Thieves dish soap is what we clean everything with um, as far as bowls, that type of thing. Um, and before we had the dish soap, we use the Thieves cleaner too. So so now we just it's just easy to, you know, they call it what the ditch and switch. And yep. so, um, and same thing with your laundry detergents too. Yes. Uh, that's a big thing we work at, work with, with our patients here is when we, we start asking all these little nitty gritty questions and people sometimes kind of look at me and like, what, <laughs> why are you asking yeah. that? And it's because it makes a difference when our pets are exposed long-term to this. And so we really start thinking about it and getting the chemicals out. This is where we can switch essential oils for the chemicals. So the laundry soap, 
the dish soap, the, the thieves cleaner, the hand soap, the hand sanitizer, you kind of got all the bases covered with that. I think the hand sanitizer is huge. Um, my eye-opening experience with, um, with hand sanitizer is petting zoos. Um, when they have those big pumps or somebody has a baby or something like that, they have these big Costco, whatever, um, two gallon pump things and they're loaded with alcohol. The number one ingredient is alcohol. And when people are putting that on their hands and then touching the next cow and putting it on touching the next sheep or the pig, then all that alcohol and all those fragrances and all those things are being passed from your hand to that animal. And think that animal was pet a thousand times that day. So no wonder why by the end of the day, they're just lethargic, right? They possibly could have some alcohol poisoning. I mean, that's just one day when I was at a fair, I thought of that and I was like, oh my God, you know, it just, it hit me and it hurt, you know? Young Living has a hand purifier that is alcohol-based, but it's denatured. So it is amazing, works so good, and literally you need a teeny tiny bit. Um, the whole Thieves line, even this spray. So this was another thing, like you were talking about fabric, or not fabric, a laundry detergent and fabric softener. 20 years ago, that was my eye-opening experience when I learned about fabric softener. And I'm not gonna dump into that because it's a big topic for me, but fabric softener and laundry detergent can cause so much damage in your home and you think it's safe because it's on the shelf. It's so not safe. Um, if you look, there's usually no ingredients on the labels and it's a hard, it's a hard research project to try to figure out what's actually in them because a lot of them are trademark secrets. And I don't like trademark secrets when it's coming to products that I'm gonna put on my clothes and it's gonna sit on me all day long. Um, I actually found a blanket in my closet that was from my grandmother. So it was washed years and years and years and years ago. And she must have used fabric softener because to this day you could still smell fabric softener on it because it's wrapped in a bag in a box and stuffed in my closet because I don't want to open it, right? So you don't need all those things and you can actually improve your life by ditching them. But another thing that hit me was hairspray. Having hairspray in the bathroom. My dogs are right under my feet. Not that I have any hair to put hairspray in anymore, but in the past, you know, like, Anything that goes in the air falls on the floor. And by introducing essential oils that way, you spray them in the air, they fall on the floor. They're actually like you were saying, ingesting them. And it's a whole body wellness experience rather than stuff going into the air or plugins that vaporize. And the dog, the cat, the bird is being exposed to poisons throughout the day. I've walked into food stores and right next to the fertilizer, there's this big Amazon parrot, you know, like, big giant parrot and I feel so bad for her because I can't even breathe when I walk in the door and this parrot has no feathers and stuff. It's so stressed out because it's living right in an environment it can't escape from right by pesticides. So think and look around your home. And like I said, when I first met Dr. Susan and I got the intake form and asked me questions about this, I'm like, I'm so glad I can answer these questions properly, you know, because I've already had that experience. But I know being a mobile groomer like I was, I would go into people's homes and I would see the plugins. I would see dogs, like eyes were tearing. Um, I would see things that I knew was not good, but you know, the people wanted their house to smell like, gosh, what were some of the names that we found? Like Snicker Doodle Dandy and all these other crazy things like caramel apple tartlet and stuff like that. You know, when, when you have those things and you're vaporizing those scents and those toxins, you can smell it, that means the poisons are in the air. You don't want to be doing that. So start thinking about what's in your house to scent it with and have easy, easy solutions like this, you know, bathrooms. This is another favorite thing of ours. Just, you know, what is this like four ounces or something? I don't know. Um, just water and oil. And we just spray this in the house. This is great for bathrooms. This is great for shoes. This is great to deodorize the car. You can use this for anything. And we put I don't know, three drops of oil in this, and this lasts a long time. So it's very affordable that way too. So start by removing all those wax melting things. Those, there's another thing out there. It's like a wick that sits in an alcohol base. You light it, it's a ceramic top or something like that, and it burns for hours. I don't know, there's lots of things like that. But do your homework in it. It might sound really, really good and really, really fun and sounds like it smells good, but think about what it actually is you know like bath and body works they have all those 
warm vanilla spice, apple something, and warm ocean breeze. Do you think there's a warm ocean breeze in that bottle? Because I want, I want to know, like, how they do that? It's all synthetic, right? You can buy any kind of smell that you want to have for anything that you want synthetically made. That's what perfumes are, right? So don't mix up what a perfume is and what true essential oils are. Every On that note, go ahead. That note, I need to interject this story. <laughs> go ahead. A gal came to me and we wanted she wanted to talk essential oils. So she came and she brought her, you know, we filled out the form and I have them bring whatever they're using with the pet. And she brought this, I get to use the word plethora of oils. There had to be like seven or eight or nine different brands there. And some of them were, on my, in my opinion, very, very suspect. And so she said, oh, but I only diffuse the cheap ones. The others, these others over here are too expensive to put in the diffuser. I'm like, no, 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 no. So that was a, that was an educational moment. And I mean, she was very um, satisfied with what oil she had been using to keep her and her family's health above the wellness line. But we had an educational moment about economics, as well as what's really in the oils and how just because a good quality oil like Young Living may be more than a five or six dollar bottle of the same thing, you know, on the shelf and that goes in the diffuser, oh no, 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 no. We don't we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. So that is a big part. Um, and let's face it, our pets don't live as long as we do. So the toxin buildup, the things that happen with that happens a lot quicker than it does with us. And so we want our pets around as long as we can have them. And so keeping the toxins, like you said, behind the door elsewhere and keeping the good stuff on the inside, essential oils is a great way to do that. I'm trying to look and see what I'm saying here. Um, I like that you talk about starting low with the diffuser oils. Um, you know, let's just jump in and talk about the, the controversy that's happened. Hopefully by the time we publish this, it's long gone and we don't have to worry about it. But every time it comes back, right? Cats. I have three. You have one. But in the clinic, you have four. four. I'm like, four? No, I have four. Oh. Um, and a bird, okay? And she has diffusers everywhere, okay? I personally, one of the vets I, um, I, I use is a cat vet, and she uses a lot of essential oils, and she diffuses essential oils in the clinic. So I want to make it very clear. If this stuff is happening in vet clinics, safely happening, where good things are happening, if bad things were happening, this wouldn't be a topic that, um, I don't even know how to say this, I get so like, I don't even know how to address it, but if things were happening in her clinic to her cats, if they were just falling over left and right in three or four days, like the internet wants you to believe, the best way to kill your cat is to show them essential oils, basically, I think we'd have a problem, and I think it would be bigger, bigger than the one post on Facebook going around that has everybody's attention. And every few months, this stuff comes up, and you know, you don't know the backstory. So, do you want to talk about what oils you diffuse in your clinic? Well, I diffuse citrus oils. <gasps> <laughs> Where's that picture? The Home Alone kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I diffuse. We diffuse a lot of citrus oils. We Thank diffuse you. the eucalyptus. We diffuse some peppermint, lavender. All the ones I think were listed you know, in that post. And again, we're using water-based diffusers. And we've got a cat that kind of hangs by our back computer. And we have our, our combination du jour. Actually, I let my staff pick that. And they're always researching and looking at all these different combinations. And I let them just do whatever they want with my Young Living Essential Oil. Sometimes I have to tell them... Uh, Back off. That was kind of an expensive oil. Right, right. We <laughs> I mean, don't need your five Melissa. I know. I just talked about not diffusing the expensive oils, but yeah, when you're when you're pulling out the Melissa or the Rose, uh, we're gonna like you know, right. come back on that one come back on that one, uh, because again, with the quality of the Young Living oils, I'm confident that we aren't going to have any problems. I use a lot of um, thieves and purification together in the diffuser okay. that's running in my surgery room when I do surgery. We were running that in, um, in, our, in our cat room the other day when I, I posted a video and somebody came back. There was a cat in a cage and they couldn't get away. 
and you know, explain that. It's like, well, we were only using three or four drops and it was on intermittent. And I know, you know, that was a happy, healthy cat. And the other cat that normally sits on the back computer, she actually went in there. We were using a different blend with, um, I think that day it was Idaho balsam, orange and cinnamon bark. And she actually decided she wanted the purification and thieves more on that. So again, they're, they're pretty smart. They're pretty smart. And um, we've got one cat that hangs back here in our treatment room and she's always back here. And we do all kinds of different you know, diffuser blends on that. So there's a lot of, so the whole citrus thing, the whole eucalyptus thing, again, it's quality, quality, quality on the cats. And so if you aren't sure of the quality, then don't do it. That's what, and that's something I wanted to say earlier too. Um, as a veterinary professional, and I think you, I think I can safely say, you see this in the medical profession too, that when something happens and, you know, there's an unknown component, somebody tells the doctor or the veterinarian, well, I did this and this and this with something they're not familiar with. The first knee jerk reaction from a medical professional, if they don't know anything about it, is, oh, don't do it. And that's just because they can't speak to it. They don't know, they don't understand. So it's not necessarily their fault, but again, they don't, they don't know how that may interact with what they wanna do from their Western or allopathic training mindset, whatever you wanna call it. So, and that's where there, this gets to be this big bad rap um, when you look at the poison control animal sites about, oh, don't use this, don't use that, because again, nobody addresses the quality. And I mean, I know people in my upline, actually, that has a cat that died from walking through, a couple footprints through, a bad quality Melaleuca alternifolia, tea tree oil. And so, yes, it unfortunately can happen. We never wish that on anybody, never. Um, but again, if you're using the right stuff at the right level, the right concentration, it can be done safely. So I don't, some of the blends that we use here, um, we, don't, we don't use a lot of tea tree in our diffuser, but there are some other things that we do uh, for, for skin health that might include some of that. And so um, Melrose is one that I like to use. Again, very small, very dilute, and a lot of times we're adding it to something else. So um, as, a, as an ointment base, Oh, yeah, there you go. And, and we're diluting it. Show the animal sense. Yay. <laughs> so there's a lot of good things that can be done with, with the essential oils and cats. And can we go back just one, let's get back one thing. I don't want to miss us. Now you were talking about the cat that works, walked through the tea tree that had a bad reaction to it. On the flip side of that, there's another person in the Texas area that, um, you know, she sent somebody home and said, use some tea tree, or I think it was tea tree, right? It was Melaleuca, um, yep. on the cat, and um, it was very, had a lot of stuff happening, and they thought it would be something good, and the, the person went home and thought, well, hey, a little is good, more has got to be better, right? And ended up using, I think she said, almost the whole bottle on this yeah. cat, yeah, and I that. Um, the cat lived, the cat's thriving, the cat has a complete set of hair, you know, like a full, full, full coat, and guess what? She won an award for doing that, <laughs> not doing it, but telling the story about this, you know, so using the right quality stuff is safe, you know, don't let the fear that's out there influence you, but at the same time, the fear should be real, it should be absolutely real, and that goes back to talking about there's so many bad things out there, you got to find the company that works best for you, and our, for both of us, we chose Young Living Essential Oils because of the quality, the purity, the farming, the culture of the background where everything came from, we both come from, you know, I wasn't a farmer, but there was farms all around me growing up. So we grew up around cows and feeding the pigs and walking through cornfields and my grandfather telling me to chew on sticks and, you know, chew sap off a tree. And I didn't know what the heck he was talking about, but I did it because I didn't want to get in trouble, you know, so we chewed sap. Um, and it's just bringing, bringing that full, full circle for us. But taking it low and slow and just knowing what you're using. I mean, just the quality of your lotion alone. I have a dog that literally licks your legs when you put lotion on it. I've never had a dog that did this. I know it's common. I, I've seen it with other dogs, but I've never had one. Um, he'll lick your whole foot 
like the whole bottom. I mean, he's like the best pedicure dog on the planet. But if you have some bad stuff on your feet, if you're using stuff over the counter and it's got fragrance and sodium lauryl sulfates and PEG and all this stuff in it, the dog's ingesting that, right? So what do you say? Like when you, you go to the vet and you say, my dog's having all this issue and the vet just says, oh, it looks like they're having an allergic reaction. So say you just got your diffuser, right? And you started diffusing, I don't know, lavender, so to say but your dog that night had licked your foot and you put this stuff from CVS on your foot, you're probably going to blame this because the stuff on your foot is something you've always used, but the dog's never licked it or ingested it, but you might not think about that. So you really have to be very conscious of what's in your home. And that's why I'm saying that whole gatekeeper thing is all that stuff. You have to just not bring it into your home. And if it's there, you have to ditch it because there's so many easy, easy products out there that are so safe for us and our animals our skin being the largest organ, but also, you know, cats and dogs lick themselves, lick each other, lick you, that you just have to be careful with that. So, you know, this was, it's a very broad topic that we're talking about here, how to introduce, but at the same time, it's keeping it simple, being the gatekeeper, being conscious. And the same thing with the barn too, you know, yeah, you get more of the fresh air exchange and stuff. Oh, back to this fresh air exchange. It's winter where we both are. There is no fresh air exchange, right? Like you open the house door and it's like, it's cold. You want to shut it really quick, right? So if you have bad things in the air, like candles and all these plugins and stuff, it's just staying and it's going throughout the house going into the filter and a lot of that comes right back up to you. So, you know, think about the air quality. What we do sometimes, we actually grab our resin burner or our diffuser and put it down by the, um, the furnace downstairs and let it suck it in and send that through the whole house. Um, it's just like one of those cheap things if you're thinking about it, but uh, you can do it by an intake or anything like that. But even using Thieves spray, like the hard surface spray on your filters, on the inside of your home, that's awesome. You can do it with this too, but I wouldn't do it really with this because with water, it would make your filter a little gooey, sticky, and that's probably gonna be more of a mess than you need be. But you know, think about what's on your body because what's on you goes to the dog. And also think of it this way, when you're putting oils on you, if you don't wanna put them on your dog, your dog, your cat or whatever sleeps right next to you with my diffuser over me, my cat sleeps right here, my diffuser pours over my head all night long, so yes. My cat is 12 years old, has been in this house for seven years. Oh my God, I feel like I'm old now just doing that math. Um, <laughs> that's my one-eyed cat. Um, so things like this, totally safe. We don't worry about what oils are in our diffuser at night. It's such a low concentration. Um, you wanna add to that or jump into the barn or? Uh, well, uh, the one thing, I would, the other thing I would say about pets or especially cats, um, one of the other things that comes out with this is how all, some of these oils can be um, liver toxic to the cats. I think I saw some posts that, oh, you can be diffusing it for a long time, and then all of a sudden your cat is basically going to drop over, Fall over yeah. some liver failure. So if you've got any kind of old pets, a couple things, if you've got any kind of old pets and you want to start using something like this, get a baseline, get a baseline first, get some blood work done so that you know if there's any other underlying issues that may be in play here. So if you have a, I mean, I've got, of, of our four clinic cats, three of them are 14 years old and they've been exposed to essential oils their, their whole life. I mean, I, well, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Cause I started in 2001, 2002, okay. they started in my clinic. So yeah, pretty much. And um, so again, if you're, you know, when in doubt, don't do it. When in doubt, if you are not sure of what you're gonna do, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, get some baseline so you know that you have a healthy individual and then we build from there when you're starting to use the, the essential oils. And a lot of these charts that are out there that say don't use this, don't use that, again, part of that information is true, part of it's not, but what it doesn't address is the quality or the brand or the specifics on how it was used, what was being done. So again, that, that whole fear factor thing is what just blows it out of proportion. People can put whatever they want on the internet without any backing. We were, in, we were involved, Heather and I were involved in a conversation the other day. And um, again, when we started asking some of the nitty gritty questions, well, I don't know, I don't know. I couldn't afford this test. I couldn't afford that test. 
you know, the, the vet said, but again, if they don't understand how it works and you're in a crisis situation, you know, kind of like I said, the knee jerk reaction is to look at something that you don't understand and go, eh, probably. But again, this is where this needs to be an integrative, integrative modality. We, we, we need modern medicine, we need traditional medicine, but to help stay above the wellness line, using the more natural things, I think, has made a huge difference. When, when I learned that, when you come out of vet school, you don't really, you know, you're, you're, you're doing the, the right or the narrow road and you kind of have blinders on because this is all you know. And so as a veterinarian, if you expand <laughs> your, your consciousness, which it was, this has been a, a mind boggling thing because I've just learned so much, you know, especially from an energetic perspective, um, you know, yeah, I understand what chakras are now and the whole energy medicine <laughs> and, you know, the power of thought, the power of the universe. You know, that's why there's a sign up front that says the witch is in and she's casting spells. But hey, <laughs> you know, if it, 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 can, it can all come together and work really nicely and we don't have to work, as you've been saying for quite a while now, Heather, we don't have to work on a fear based um, platform. Yeah. And that's what the internet's doing. It's like teaching fear. And um, I don't know how many fearful um, posts I see on, on Facebook that spread so fast. But then when you see a positive post, it's kind of like, eh, it's not news. Um, you, even turning on the TV, it's all fear-based. That's how this culture is run, based on fear. Do this or else. You know, I mean, that's a whole nother topic. We won't even go there. So hopefully I think we've, you know, allayed some of that. A slow and low, water-based diffusing, um, look at it's the so chemical drop, right? just putting yeah. a drop in your hand and rubbing it on your dog you know I, I have a dog that requires quite a bit of oils applied to his body and I I put the oils on my hand and I start at his tail and work up to the base of his neck and rub it in and give him a nice massage with each oil and just you know just rub him and he's just like oh he loves it you know so his hair just does what it needs to do and we put it on that way. You don't need to grab a bottle of cedarwood and just dump the whole thing on your dog. That's just rationally not there. And some people are like, well, how does somebody know not to dump a bottle? Well, I don't know. Do you dump a bottle of anything anywhere? Like, I don't even like, somebody always, somebody said to me like, well, how do I know what's too much? And I'm like, well, with anything, would you just go buy a bottle of Tylenol and eat the whole thing. I mean, I haven't had Tylenol in my world in 20 years, but I, I don't think, and there's this little thing on the back called the um, information. <laughs> it says something about using, I can't read it in this light. Um, two drops. I don't know. It says something about two drops. I just can't read white on orange in this lighting. Um, two drops every few hours. I mean, put a drop and it's just so easy. You don't have to go crazy. A couple drops in there. So you can add oils to your lotion and apply it to yourself. That for me personally in the winter, that's one of my favorite things to do. Add oils to my hand, add lotion, and just put that wherever I need to do. Um, we won't get into this, but we'll just say if you're into energy work, muscle test your oils. You can muscle test for your dog. <laughs> Right? That's for me. I love pendulum. I mean, I can use this as a pendulum at any time, and that's... Um, what I do, and the funny thing is, um, I had a question about a supplement for my dog the other day. It just jumped out at me like it was like a firecracker. Uh, Susan called me, and she mentioned that that supplement, and I'm like, like, it blew my mind. Like, she had the same thought I did pretty much at the same time, and when she asked me about it, I was like, mm, why are you asking me? And then we both had the same result using muscle testing and pendulums and stuff like that. So it's a really cool thing. That's a whole nother topic. Um, definitely Google it, but um, it's, it's one of those things. So you want to just quickly talk about the barn and like a safe way for the horses or the cows or pigs. Okay. Well, again, that, that using a diffuser, um, if you can set that up in your barn, or, or the other thing I like to do is make a spritz. Yes. on that and so i use a lot of the purification fees um oil and water don't mix so if you want to add a little bit of like the fees cleaner that's going to help keep it um in solution a little bit better but then i use that to spray the stalls down when i go to a show i spray my trailer with it um 
you know, that's going to help keep the dust down. I, I will take an oil and put it on my hands, rub it together, and then just hold my hands over the horse's nostrils and let them, and let them breathe it that way. Because if they don't want it, they'll pull away. Oh, yeah. You're oh, smart. Yeah. They're not, we're not holding their head and forcing them on anything. They will pull their head away. Horses are the most fun for me to work with. <laughs> I just love it. Yeah. And a good place to apply the oils on horses is going to be around their, their coronary band, uh, right where the hoof and the hair meet. There's a lot of good... Oh, in my back. Okay. <laughs> Lots of different ways you can apply that. But again, one or two drops on your hands, white pet stroke, and that's a good way to do it. I do use some of the Vitality oils in my horses on the barn. Um, I might put a couple drops in their grain, or I've also been known to sprinkle it on their hay on that. And they they eat it. They don't leave their hay behind. <laughs> so um, again, some of the vitality oils can be used in that manner in the barn too. So large and small, big and tall. <laughs> yeah. there, there's lots of ways you can use the oils in a pet friendly manner in a pet home. Perfect. So let's wrap this one up and we're jumping to number four, which we're going to talk about um, vitality line, which is actually ingesting essential oils. So we'll be right back with number four.